Micro Max Heat 3. Then we've got two more heats before we start making our way into the finals. We've got Micro Max, then Junior Rotax. James Tate will start on pole position, looking to make amends for the retirement in Heat 2. He's alongside Harry Neeson with Toby Dukes and Aston Brown, the double race winner on row number two. Logan Lauder and Alex Jones will start on row three. The remaining runners, Riley Buckton Young, Caden Simpson and Jack Hutchinson. Look for Simpson to come through. He's had a good day in terms of pace, but the results haven't shown it. Certainly after heat two, where he's removed from the uh, standings for a technical infringement here at Fullbeck. Have a quick look as they make their way round. It is a rolling start, so we, are ha we do have to be quite quick as to whether any penalties were applied. Looks like uh, Minimax have managed to make their make a clean race of theirs. Loads of penalties though coming out of that first junior pro kart race with Owen Roberts picking up five seconds for an unfair advantage. Same for Sophie Pawsey. Ten seconds more for Pawsey. Uh, Harrison Johns gets a five second for a front fairing and then scrutineering penalties for Roddis, Roberts and Brown. Not quite sure what they're for, but we'll try and find out throughout the uh, day. I think a couple of them have been fairly consistent. So it might be tyres, but we'll figure it out at, uh, at some point. Minis are, as the micros make their way around. That's James Tate in the 20 on the left. The 47 is Harry Neeson, <coughs> one of our Driven Dreams drivers. He's going to start on the front row on the outside there. James Tate, though, will control the pace as they come through. Just been told to slow down ever so slightly as they make their way through. Looks like we should be good to go, though. Lights go out, we're away. And racing, then, in our Micro Max. It's that long run down. And Tate looks to the inside, but he's looking across at Neeson. And James Tate is going to drop, is he down? into third place. Now Neeson goes all the way around the outside and Harry Neeson leads as Aston Brown gets into the back of James Tate and pushes him through. Has a quick head, uh, head tap as well. He wants to work with him. Aston Brown though trying to make amends and get back into the uh, into second place as Tate finds a way past Neeson into the braking zone. Neeson breaks quite early. Tate goes around the outside and through into the lead. Then they're still all nose to tail. Looks like everybody's made it round the first few corners of this lap in this eight minute plus one lap heat for our micro max class and james tate who had the issues remember just prior to lunch when he went off down uh, a couple of times actually where he was heading towards the lead went off down at turn one then went off very very badly on the outside of the chicane the following lap and that was his race in the uh, in the pan unfortunately for him just wasn't, uh, wasn't meant to be, but now is out in the lead. And Aston Brown trying to close him in. We know James Tate's got some good pace. Just uh, needs to uh, calm, calm the head a little bit, does James Tate, and see whether he can uh, hold off Aston Brown for the uh, remainder of this race. Although we have only just got underway. So there's still plenty of time for Brown. Doesn't need to rush into this. It's Neeson. Holding off Toby Dukes in third place. Riley Buckton Young already coming through the field from the, uh, the tail end where he started this race in P7. He's already up to P5. Caden Simpson is up into, uh, into sixth now at the expense of Alex Jones. You see them swap round on timing as well. So if they go green down the left, they've moved up one. If they go red, they've dropped down one. And the other colours are, if they go purple, that's the fastest lap of the race and personal best there. No, it is blue as Simpson sort of overcooks it a little bit down there has to avoid Riley Buckton Young so moves offline for Buckton Young James Tate already defensive on Harry on uh, Aston Brown here parking that number 20 machine right in the middle of the track fullback not a circuit that's overly easy to overtake on certainly if you find a cart right in the middle of the track and James Tate is parking that number 20 machine right where he needs to pretty much the circuit here at fullback laid in two halves there's a big line right down the middle of it and to an extent James Tate is just driving that car all the way down that line in the middle of the track takes the curves on the inside which is natural then comes to the inside sees that line in the middle again and it's going to be it's very defensive they are still carrying a lot of speed though and moving away from the pack behind them but at some point Aston Brown is going to have to try something different to get through because James Tate making that number 20 machine about twice as wide as it is just by where he's positioning the car and Aston Brown is going to have to line this one up maybe for two, three, four corners in fact 
rather than taking the little bites out of the cherry, needs to go to swallow it whole and just make that one big move. But he needs to line it up from three or four corners back, make sure he's close enough to James Tate. He looks like he could be here and it doesn't matter here. I don't think how defensive Tate's going to go. Brown's going to try and go round the outside. Tate's looking at him to make sure he's in a position as Aston Brown sets the fastest lap of the race, but it doesn't mean anything if he can't get past James Tate. He's going to have to go round the outside here. It's a long way round the outside of turn one at fullback. And uh, James Tate, looking left and right, can't, uh, can't get enough, in fact, of seeing Aston Brown behind him. His head's turning round. I was expecting at some point to see it go all the way round like a barn owl. He was having so much of a look at Aston Brown there in order to hold the 57 machine behind him. But James Tate, nonetheless, doing what he needs to do at the minute to hold off the charging Brown, who's won two races so far today. The first one incredibly convincingly by around about half a lap to the rest of the field as Neeson holds on to third place. They are some six seconds behind, but the rest of the field cannot get past the 47 of Harry Neeson, Toby Dukes, Riley Buckton Young, Caden Simpson, Alex Jones and Logan Lauder as now Aston Brown comes down the inside. Arm up off the wheel for James Tate. So I don't know whether he got a little bump and run there by Aston Brown into that corner or whether he just overcooked it himself and was just a little bit upset that he'd done so. But we'll find out hopefully a little bit later on if we can, uh, if there's any penalties assessed post race as to whether it came from that incident or not. But now Aston Brown is through and into the lead. Let's see then how much if anything, James Tate was holding him up or whether now James Tate can stick with Aston Brown. Previous lap times for the both of them, 51 fives. Almost identical, personal best, a 51 five, six for Brown, a 5 six, seven for James Tate. So we'll see whether they can uh, stick with him now, James Tate, as Harry Neeson continues to hold off Dukes, Buckton Young, Simpson, and Lauder and Jones, in fact, in the background there in the orange as well. So we've got a six-cart battle for third place. Neeson doing superbly in that number 47 machine just to hold off. He's coming to the inside ever so slightly as well and then taking the cart back out onto the line that he needs to to maximise that turn one hairpin here at fullback. And behind them... Everybody else is just pretty much playing follow the leader. Nobody's going too much for an overtake, although there is a bit of a pop out of the slipstream there by Alex Jones, showing a little bit of impatience to get past Logan Lord. It comes out of the slipstream at a, uh, a position that isn't normally favoured. You don't see too many overtakes down there into that left hander because of the natural run. You don't carry a huge amount of speed out of the uh, preceding chicane. And the driver in front will almost certainly get on the power sooner unless there's a mistake made by the driver in the lead of that battle. But personal best is coming in for most of the runners in this battle as Neeson goes slightly wider than you would normally expect. And that sort of balked his exit a little bit as Toby Dukes tries to go down the inside. Caden Simpson goes very, very wide round the outside and in doing so loses a few cart lengths to Riley Buckton Young. He's slotted back in though without losing a place. He should hopefully close back up under braking into the chicane. So these drivers in this battle, losing around about a second a lap to the uh, to those in front. But Harry Neeson doing what he needs to do. And at the moment, he's still comfortable. I haven't seen Toby Dukes yet move out and make an overtake in opportunity. We're at one minute and 10 remaining. Aston Brown sets the fastest lap of the race with James Tate still sticking round there, but has dropped about a second off the pace of Aston Brown in front of him. So it's Brown, Tate and Neeson, the top three. Neeson driving superbly to hold off Dukes, Buckton, Young, Simpson, Lauder and Alex Jones. Although Jones now has actually dropped off the back of this battle in front by a few tenths of a second. He's half a second back when he was right on the back of uh, Logan Lauder previously. There's some lap traffic in front that might split the pack certainly is the leading two in this battle for third place come through. Although Riley Buckton, Young has managed to navigate it fairly simple and we're getting reports in that the leader's having some problems we'll keep an eye on that in a few moments time and he's going to come over the line in a few moments and he certainly is James Tate has closed right back up here and uh, reports out there the uh, eagle-eyed spotters are picking up a potential misfire on the 57 of Aston Brown and he's looking over his shoulder at James Tate behind him and quite rightly so because James Tate now will be seeing the 57 slowing and falling back into his clutches here at Fullbeck we are Going to get the last lap board 
as it comes round. It can't come soon enough for Aston Brown, but I don't think he, I don't think he's going to be able to hold on. He's going to have to do to James Tate what James Tate did to him in the early part of the race, and that's park that 57 machine in every potential overtaking opportunity pretty much line it down the middle of the track make sure James Tate can't come through this could be one of the slowest in terms of final laps we've ever seen in the Micro Max just because Aston Brown's going to have to park that car in the middle of the track as James Tate closes in smells victory and Aston Brown as we expected parks the 57 in the middle of the track he will come to the inside again will he know he's got enough for James Tate to not have to uh, drop into the middle of the track down there, which would have ruined his entry anyway. Another look over the shoulder, three tenths of a second on timing, but James Tate closing right in on Aston Brown through the chicane section. You can see Brown trying, wrestling on exit. James Tate is alongside and into the left-hander with half a lap remaining. James Tate retakes the lead from Aston Brown. Brown with problems with that car, suspected misfire. James Tate doesn't care though through and back into the lead having defended superbly in the early part of the race Aston Brown couldn't do the same with his faltering machinery and James Tate comes through for a fantastic victory arm off the wheel already takes the chequered flag Brown holds on for second place but disappointment for him he's not going to have a hundred percent record today the opportunity there gone with a second place